Nope, these are not some dried up old bean burgers I'm trying to pass off on you. What, you've never heard of Gorilla Cookies? Well, me either. And while at first glance, these may not look like anything you would wanna make, stick with me, these are actually really good. I'm always intrigued by food nostalgia and especially backstories that go along with it. And these Gorilla Cookies have some pretty interesting history. But first things first, apparently the Gorilla Cookie is not to be confused with Gorilla Cookies. Two very different meanings and spellings of the same word. Now, I did not come across exactly why it is spelled the way that it is, or even why they're called Gorilla Cookies in the first place. But let me rewind a little bit. Let's head over to the University of Wisconsin at Madison, where this Gorilla Cookie became a much beloved student staple. From the late 60s through to the 80s, it was produced by a bakery called Quercus Alba Bakery. A 1964 UW graduate, Ted O'Dell, tweaked the ingredients and baked them for that bakery. These cookies were sold in six and 12 pack sleeves through the Mifflin Street Co-op, a hefty and hearty energy cookie, sort of dense nutrient packed granola cookies, a backpack snack of sorts that kept the students going all day long. But lo and behold, these cookies popularity fizzled out sometime in the 80s when Ted O'Dell moved on and the bakeries stopped making them. Ted took the recipe with him to his grave in 2021 before his passing rumor had it that he was quoted as saying, the Gorilla Cookie recipe is evil and needs to be kept out of this world. I'm telling you, this Gorilla Cookie story just keeps getting more interesting. There's an entire website, actually multiple websites, dedicated to the Gorilla Cookie. And if you decide to research this topic with a simple Gorilla Cookie search, be forewarned, you will go down a rabbit hole of Gorilla Cookie warfare that is truly unbelievable. I'll admit it, I am now obsessed with the obsession of this cookie and the quest to figure out the recipe for the original Gorilla Cookie. So of course I set out to make a vegan version and I really hope they don't find my version anywhere floating on the interwebs because I'm certain they would have me exiled. So here's how I did it. By following the recipe listed in the article that I'm going to link below, I of course changed some of the ingredients to vegan and I'll admit the ingredient list is crazy. There's so many ingredients that I couldn't even fit them all on the table but I'm starting with oats, although there's some heavy debate right off the bat if oats were even used. I mean, how can the memory of this cookie be so foggy to so many people? It's really startling how much heated debate swirls around this recipe. But there is a clear consensus that walnuts and sunflower seeds were used, as well as some sesame seeds, which I didn't find out until later. Raisins and honey, but for the honey, I substituted agave to make it vegan, and I you could you equally use maple syrup instead. So molasses is also debated, as some people think it could have been sorghum and or brown sugar, but I love me some molasses, so in it goes. I used a combination of melted vegan butter and coconut oil on my first try, but on my second attempt, I used all vegan butter. Peanut butter was almost definitely not used according to some of the articles that I've read, but can we all agree on some vanilla extract at least? So I of course switched the eggs to flax meal and then a pulse in the food processor before adding in the wheat germ, which I also didn't have, so I used bran flakes instead. I read that it was possible protein powder was used, but then other articles say milk powder. So who really knows? It's truly a mystery at this point, but I'm adding in some vegan protein powder. A pinch of baking soda, although in one article I read seems that would be blasphemous. Cinnamon was agreed upon as the spice and of course some salt. Now here is where I went off the rails. Brewer's yeast was absolutely an ingredient according to those who have the original packaging from the bakery that made these cookies. But I don't have that, and so I thought, hmm, miso paste? I know, I know, the alumni of UWMA will have my head for this. Millet seems to be an agreed upon ingredient, but I also didn't have that, so I used quinoa. And I'll be honest, that ended up being my favorite addition to these cookies. 
whole wheat flour was definitely the flour of choice, although the amounts really vary from like a couple of tablespoons to a half a cup. Like there's no definitive answer as to how much flour to add. And this is why the consistencies in all the outcomes of the flour vary so greatly. I added three tablespoons to mine, um, but be aware that my final recipe on my website is my final answer and one that I'm pretty happy with. As I scooped out my little hockey puck bean burger lookalikes, I knew right away that these things are fit for a horse. Talk about hefty and hearty. Now, obviously I have no way of knowing what the actual originals tasted like, and I can't even be sure that anybody does, but I am quite certain that they did not look like this. The versions that I've seen definitely spread out and mine, well, overall, I really like the way these turned out. They are definitely hefty and hearty and densely packed with some healthy energy. I seriously can't stop eating these. So even though I was never a student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, I can somehow totally relate to the obsession of figuring out the best formula. It's really a tasty experiment that I may not stop tweaking and testing. They are so surprisingly good, and I hope that you'll go ahead and check out my recipe and maybe even get into the test kitchen and see what you can come up with for yourself. Click the links to these fabulous articles that I came across and you'll probably spiral down the gorilla cookie rabbit hole like I did. This was so much fun and I hope you liked this video. As always, grab the recipes at Gretchen'sVeganBakery.com and until next time, happy vegan baking. Bye for now.